Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing another Linux distribution that I've never used before, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I'll give you a hint on which Linux distribution I will be reviewing today. You see this shirt? Kali, the Hindu goddess. That's right guys, today I'm going to be reviewing Kali Linux. Um, any of you that study world religions, uh, I like to read up on a lot of uh, the various religions around the world. Kali is really one of the best gods or goddesses in any religion. Uh, I really loved how she was featured in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Kali, Kali Ma, Shakti Day. So, Kali Linux's website. They are at Kali.org. I click on the Downloads page, and I am presented with a number of options for download. I have Kali Linux, their standard 64-bit ISO, 32-bit ISO. We have Kali Linux Lite, also in 64-bit or 32-bit. I have uh, some ARM images. And we have some images that feature various desktop environments like Enlightenment, KDE, LXDE, Mate, XFCE, and then we have some virtual machines. We have a Kali Linux VMware, Kali Linux VirtualBox. I found a uh, post on their forums, though, to explain some of this. Um, the standard Kali Linux, also called Kali Normal, Kali Full, Kali Fat, uses the GNOME desktop environment and includes, and includes all of the tools from Kali-Linux-Full. It's a meta package that includes, I'm assuming, all their penetration testing stuff, you know, all the Kali Linux goodies. So that is the full Kali Linux, um, and that's probably the one I'm going to download and install today. Kali Lite is Kali, sometimes called Kali Slim. It uses the XFCE desktop environment. It does not include all the standard tools by default. Uh, they're trying to keep that ISO image down in size. I think that one's under a gig in size. Kali Mini. They also have something called Kali Mini. That is that is the core setup files for Kali. So probably not a lot of graphical programs installed by default. Maybe none. I'm not sure on that. Kali Arm. Kali Docker. Kali Cloud. Kali NetHunter. And then they have Custom Im Image, which is uh, a.k.a. the live build. I'm just going to go ahead and pull down the standard full version of Kali, 64-bit. And it looks like that uh, ISO size is 2.8 gigs, so pretty hefty ISO. Okay, so I finished downloading the ISO, and I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine today. I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. Again, this is Kali, the full edition. And we have options in our boot menu. Live, Live Failsafe, Live Forensics. Live USB Persistence, Live USB Encrypted Persistence, Install, which I'm assuming is a text-based installer, Graphical Install, a graphical installer, Install with Speech Synthesis, and then we have Advanced Options. Now, Kali is Debian-based, so this boot menu actually is very similar to the Debian boot menu. Uh, I'm going to go with, I'm just going to go with the Graphical Installer. All right, and the installer has loaded. Uh, and I apologize in advance during the making of this video if you guys hear like a really bad thunderstorm going on. Uh, it's a pretty pretty good storm going on outside, so kind of noisy outside. All right, language. It's already chosen English for me. I'm just going to click continue. United States for my country, territory, or area. That's correct. American English for my keyboard. That's correct. All right, detect and mount CD-ROM, load installer components from CD. Yeah, this is pretty much your standard Debian install. It's detecting network hardware, configuring our network. All right, we need to choose a host name. It's already picked Kali for me. I'm fine with that. Click continue. Configure the network, a domain name. I really don't need to add a domain name, so I can just skip that. All right, password. 
So I've typed in my password. All right, configuring the clock. I'm in the central time zone here in the U.S. All right, now it's detecting the disks, loading additional components, setting up the partitioner. All right, guided partitioning or manual partitioning. Hmm. Uh, being a Debian-based installer, Debian loves to create a swap partition the same size as the RAM you gave your machine. I gave this virtual machine 6 gigs of RAM. I do not want to create a 6 gig swap partition. So I'm going to go ahead and do the manual partitioning. So I created like a 20 gig drive on this virtual machine. I wanted to make sure this virtual machine had plenty of space because the Kali ISO was pretty big. So, all right, note, you will not be able to undo this operation. Create an empty partition table on this device. Yeah, okay, whatever. All right. All right, so I'm just going to create one big partition, extended four, so it's a file system. Root point, I mean, mount point is root. Uh, bootable flag is on. It all looks good here. I'm going to do done setting, no, done setting up the partition. Yeah, click continue. Right, finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Click continue. All right, you have not selected partitions for swap. Yeah, anytime in Debian um, you don't create a swap partition, it's going to warn you, hey, you forgot to create your swap partition. Do you want to return to the partitioning portion of the installer? Uh, no, I don't. I'm just going to skip creating a swap altogether in this virtual machine. That's really not necessary. All right, if you continue the changes listed below, Okay, it's basically showing our partition scheme here. Right changes to disk? Yes. Click continue. All right, and that portion of the installer has completed. That took about 10 minutes. Now it's asking us, do we want to use a network mirror? Uh, yes, you, you need to choose yes on this question. All right, proxy information. I'm not using a proxy, so we can just skip that. All right, now it's configuring the apt package manager. All right, now we come to the Grub Bootloader install. Install Grub Bootloader to the master boot record. Yes, click Continue. All right, we need to click the partition slash dev slash SDA in my case. And it will install the bootloader. And the installation is completed. We need to reboot this machine. And I have rebooted my newly installed Kali Linux. Kali Ma Shakti Day. Let's see how fast uh, boot up time is. Okay. It's taking a little bit of time to get to our login manager here. Not too bad though. Okay. Let me type my username. It's not wanting to. You know what? I probably need to close some some other windows I've got going on here. Let me close out of some other stuff. This virtual machine's running a little slow on me. Okay, and this is Kali Linux. So again, this is the GNOME desktop environment. It's GNOME three. If I go up here to Applications. I notice they have the Applications and Places menu uh, here, very reminiscent of the old GNOME 2 menu system. Under Applications, we have uh, our Favorites here, where apparently our browser is Firefox ESR. We have our Terminal, terminal of course. Let's see. Are they using the standard GNOME Terminal? It looks like it. And we have, of course, Files, which is Nautilus, the file manager. And then we have some security penetration stuff. LeafPad. We have, of course, the GNOME tweaks. Uh, LeafPad is a minimal text editor. So I'm guessing they're choosing to go with LeafPad over uh, gedit, which is the standard text editor in GNOME. I actually think that's a smart choice. I really don't like gedit that much. All right. Uh, information gathering. Uh, what programs do we have? We have Dimitri, DN Map, DN Map Client, DN Map Service, Ike Scan, uh, and I have no idea what any of these programs are. I'm not a security guy. I'm not a penetration tester. Not anything like that. So I won't be opening any of these programs. I will not be showing you how to use any of these programs. Uh, 
Let's see. Malt Go, Net Discover, Nmap, POF, Recon, NG, Sparta, and Zen, Zenmap. Well, that's some interesting names there. Let me just open one just to just to open something. Here is Recon NG. Recon modules, reporting modules, import modules. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what this particular program is about. Um, it is a terminal-based program. Being that it is a terminal-based program, anytime you have questions about a program, you can always man recon dot dash ng I believe was the name of the program yeah no manual entry for recon dash ng unfortunately that's unfortunate all right Vulnerab vulnerability analysis we have Golis Mero Linus Nikto Nmap Sparta and Unix something I, I can't read the the full name of the program here let's open it Unix privacy oh, okay Let's see. This script checks file permissions and other settings that could allow local users to escalate privileges. Anyway, this is the full kitchen sink version of Kali, so it has got all of the testing and security, forensics, all, all those utilities installed here. We have categories for web application analysis with quite a bit of stuff in it. Database assessment. Bunch of uh, SQL stuff. I guess we're testing your SQL databases. We have a uh, password attacking and various programs for that. I guess for you know trying to crack passwords. Wireless attacking. Okay. I guess for trying to penetrate a wireless network. Reverse engineering. We have a number of tools for that. Exploitation tools have programs with very cool names such as Armitage and Metasploit. Sniffing and spoofing, post exploitation, forensics, reporting tools, social engineering tools, and the system services. And then we have a category for that is called usual applications. And this is where you find like your normal accessories, you know, all your GNOME utilities, such as the calculator, the file manager. GVim and LeafPad. Uh, they do have GEdit. This text editor right here, I'm assuming, is GEdit. We have the standard internet category where Firefox and such would be. Uh, we have an office category, but nothing's really in it. Other. Let's see if I can scroll down and see what else we have. Programming. There's a few things in the programming category. PyCrust, some cute stuff, some SQL database stuff too. Sound and video. Nothing. We have the uh, GNOME video player, but that's it. System tools. Gparted is included by default, so that's good. They also have a Midnight Commander, uh, the Debian bug reporting tool. Software. Let's click software. And this looks like your standard GNOME software. So, speaking of software, let me run an update see if they're um, mostly using the Debian repos or maybe they have their own repos as well so I'm gonna sudo actually I don't need to do sudo I'm already logged in as root here apt update and and apt upgrade and this particular version of Kali Linux was released January 2018 so it's not a terribly old ISO but there are 711 packages that need to be updated I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes here it does look like they have a lot of their own repos seeing archive.kali.org so yeah a very large number of packages needing to be installed Opening the GNOME Tweak tool, let's check out themes. Uh, under themes, applications, the theme is called Kali X. We also have Blackbird, Bluebird, Graybird. What is Blackbird? Let's see what that looks like for us. Yeah, it's a gray theme. Or was it Bluebird that I chose? I can't remember which one I picked now. 
Yeah, Blackbird. Yeah, and that was a pretty nice theme there, actually, the Blackbird theme. So there's the file manager with the Blackbird theme. Close that. I'm going to go back to the standard Kali X theme. I like the, the lighter theme against the, the black panel and the pretty dark wallpaper. Icons. We're using an icon set called Vibrancy-Kali. Um, we do have the, of course, standard Gnome Adwaita icon set. We have the elementary Zubuntu Dark icon set as well. And that's really the extent of my review here of Kali Linux. I can't do a proper review because I'm not a hacker, I'm not a security guy, I'm not a forensics and penetration testing kind of guy. So I, I really don't know anything how to use any of these utilities that came by default here in Kali Linux. But those of you that are into that sort of thing, Kali Linux seems like it would be a fantastic distro based on Debian, so you know it's stable. Kali Linux has become a very, very popular Linux distro in the last few years. It used to be called Backtrack Linux. Now it's called Kali Linux. Currently in DistroWatch, ranked number 15 on their six-month page hit rankings list. So that's a, a pretty high ranking for DistroWatch. And since, since I can't give a proper review of a lot of these tools in Kali Linux, I wanted to uh, point you guys in a direction where you can get some useful in information on Kali Linux. Kali Linux Tricks, that particular YouTube channel, just search Kali Linux Tricks. This guy's got, you know, 12,500 subscribers and uh, just a ton of good videos on Kali Linux, uh, how to hack certain systems and various devices. So check out Kali Linux Tricks. And if uh, penetration testing and forensics and security are your thing, uh, give Kali Linux a try. Peace, guys.